question of the day, adding clinicians to your group practice credentialing. So excited that you're growing your team. I love to see it. There are a few things that we want to think through before we tackle adding clinicians to your group credentialing contracts. How are you currently credentialed? What type of provider are you adding to the contract? A quick shout out to our partners at Therapy Notes for sponsoring this question and answer series. I love Therapy Notes and how seamless and intuitive the system is. I also love that they continue to respond in intentional ways to the needs of their customers while also being reasonably priced. So try Therapy Notes for free for three months. Go on over to therapynotes.com and use our community code MIMH. All right, so in order to give you accurate steps that fit your current situation, we need to know how your existing credentialing is set up. Do you already have a group contract? Is the contract in the group's name, the business EIN, and includes the group MPI too? If yes, you're almost ready to move forward. If no, hang tight, I'll circle back and give you what you need to know to get started. All right, so you already have a group contract in place and you're wanting to add a new clinician. Is that clinician eligible to be credentialed or is billing as supervisor, also known as incident two billing, allowed? Does the insurance panel require you to complete a brand new credentialing application to start a new contract each time you add a new clinician or are you able to update your roster? And lastly, is the license type of the clinician that you're adding already included in your existing group contract? For example, I'm an LCPC and my current contract is inclusive of master's and doctoral level providers such as social workers, uh, licensed clinical professionals, art therapists, and psychologists. But if I add a clinician in any of those areas or those licensure types, I only have to go through the credentialing because I already have an established contract and a fee schedule that covers their license and discipline. However, if I decide to hire a psychiatric nurse practitioner or a psychiatrist, I likely need an addendum to my existing contract to include the billable codes and rates that are applicable for those providers and their licensure type. I also need additional supplemental materials such as DEA certificates and higher malpractice policies for prescribing providers. Now let's say you don't have a group contract. You've been a solo provider and you're credentialed under your name and maybe your social security number. You're first gonna need to seek a group contract in order to add that clinician to your contract. This is a super simplified overview, but it gives a loose decision tree to help you filter your unique circumstance. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have a question you'd like us to answer, you can submit it at qna.masteringinsurance.com. You can also grab our group practice credentialing checklist and packet that's located in the resource section of the Mastering Insurance Academy. You can find more information about that program at masteringinsurance.com and just search the word academy. Until next time, take good care.